with Main Street School of Music with another installment of The More You Know. Today we're going to be talking about singing with a cold or singing with allergies. Um, so this is generally something that I've been seeing a lot of lately. It's the time of year where students are coming in and they're sick and the germs are getting spread around. So there's a lot of students that are coming in and, and they have a cold and, and they're sick and, and they're wondering, should I be singing? What should I do to take care of my voice? Uh, what sort of exercises can I do if, if I'm recovering from being sick? I still want to sing. Or if they have a performance coming up, they're debating whether they should actually be part of that performance because they are sick. And um, I just have a few tips that I can lend that will help you um, when you are feeling a little bit under the weather and you, you need to actually get out there and, and use your voice. So the first thing uh, that you want to do is you always want to make sure that you are well rested. That is the, the biggest thing out of anything is, is the rest. Um, so if your body is telling you that you're tired, you probably shouldn't be going out there and, and abusing your voice and using it more than, than you should. Uh, the second thing is obviously is to remain hydrated. So you, tea, water, water is the biggest, but tea, and if you are drinking tea, it should be a decaf tea. You don't want to use the caffeine because that will dehydrate your voice even more. The second thing is if you are going to be singing, the most important thing I believe would be a proper warm up. So when you have a cold, you don't want to you don't want to force it too much when you're warming up, uh, but the best warm up that you could do to keep your vocal cords in a relaxed position would be to sing with some vocal fry and, and warm up with some vocal fry. So for those of you who don't know what vocal fry is, it's the coming together of your vocal cords and they're rubbing in a, a really relaxed position and you hear it, it's that, that annoying sound where you hear people saying, uh, that's vocal fry. So basically, uh, an exercise that I generally use with some of my students to get the voice warmed up and uh, if you're working with, a, with having a cold or you, know, you, you have allergies, vocal fry, uh, we start with the cords closed with a, uh, 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 and then we translate it onto a scale. So I would have the students say, Closing, starting closed and, and ending closed, you would say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Now being mindful that there's absolutely no tension at all. So as soon as you can get that sound happening, that uh, 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 you know your chords are functioning and, and there's some blood flowing, you want some blood flow to those chords. So again, you want to start closed, so closed meaning your vocal cords are rubbing together, and you want to end closed. Oh yeah. So if you hear some air happening, oh yeah, oh yeah, your chords aren't closing. So being mindful that you want that, uh, that scratchy sound. Now if that is not accessible, so just start being really relaxed, long, you want, oh yeah, oh. Uh, just making that noise, getting the chords functioning. The last thing that I could lend would be, um, so your warm up, your hydration, your rest, but in part with that hydration, um, I would pick up some turmeric oil. It's kind of nasty tasting, but it's an anti-inflammatory. It's good for um, any sort of inflammation in the body, because inflammation, you don't want inflammation anywhere, it's bad for you, it's like a major killer in the body. But if your voice is inflamed, um, you just basically, uh, you can pick this up at your local health food store. So just take it out, and just a little, little dot, just a little dot in your water, um, and I, I believe that would probably be a good preemptive strike. Um, so, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.